Are you looking to hatch out some of your own baby quail and you're wondering what's the best incubator to get? That's what we're going to get covered for you in today's video, so stick around. Hey guys, welcome back to another Slightly Rednecked video. Again, my name's Chris. If you're not familiar with this channel, I help you to produce your own meat, eggs, and vegetables from your backyard, your balcony, your deck, your garage, or heck, even a spare room in your house if that's the way you want to do it. Today we're talking about incubators. It's probably the most common question I get in the weekly live broadcast is, I'm in the market for an incubator, which one should I get? Honestly, there's tons of choices out there. There's not that much difference between them. I'm gonna narrow this down to the styrofoam incubators because I feel like that's probably the best bet for most people that are just incubating for eggs in their backyard. Uh, there are large commercial incubators, big cabinet style incubators. That's probably a little bit out of the price range of most of my viewers. And it's probably way overkill for most people, unless you're just, unless you're wanting to go like commercial or something like that. This video is gonna be more about like, what are you gonna use to incubate your quail for, you know, your own backyard meat production, not for giant commercial operations, anything like that. So we're gonna talk about the styrofoam incubators. Now, there are some other incubators that are very small that I'm sure work just fine, but I'm not gonna talk about those because they don't incubate enough eggs, in my opinion, to make it worth it. So let me get my incubator, I'll show you an example of it, and then we'll talk about which ones really is the best. All right, so this is the incubator that I use. Let me start off by talking about kind of the features you're looking for in an incubator, and then we'll talk about the specific different brands and styles and which ones maybe you should choose. Um, okay, so first of all, when you're looking at an incubator, most of them are gonna be, like I said, these styrofoam incubators they are gonna look very, very similar to this. Uh, there's three major brands. There's Farm Innovations, there's Little Giant, and then there's GQF, or you may have heard called Hovabator. Um, again, this is a Little Giant. No matter which brand you pick, there's three things that you really want to look for. One is you want to have an egg turner inside. This has an automatic egg turner. Hopefully you can see that. It comes out. Um, it's hard for me to hold it and show you. This comes out. It can be removed during lockdown. Uh, but this makes it way easier. If you don't have an automatic egg turner, you're going to have to turn the eggs by hand a couple of times a day. So this is a feature that I highly recommend. It's not absolutely necessary. You can definitely incubate without an egg turner. It's not really that much work just to open the incubator up a couple times a day and roll the eggs around just a little bit. Not quite that violently, of course, but roll them around just a little bit. But this does make it a lot easier. You don't have to worry about it doing that. The other thing that you're going to want to look for is a forced air kit. Now this has a fan built into the thermostat right here, so I don't have to worry about it. Um, but I really recommend a forced air kit. Some incubators will have will be still air incubators. There will not be a fan. You can add a fan to that if you want to, but I think it's better just to start off with the fan already built in. That's my personal opinion. What I really think makes a good incubator is the forced air kit. Uh, and then the other thing, of course, is a temperature control of some kind. This is a digital temperature control. Let me turn this around. And it's not plugged in right now, but there is a little screen right there. And I know you can't see these. There's a set button, an up button, and a down button for adjusting the temperature. And uh, there's a readout right here that tells you the temperature and the humidity. Now, let me set this down and we'll talk a few things about, uh, about styrofoam incubators in general. Okay, styrofoam incubators are notorious for the thermostat being just a little bit off and not reading 100% accurate. So no matter what incubator you get, I highly recommend you pick up an extra thermometer. Actually pick up two extra thermometers. And make sure, uh, let me show this up close, hopefully you can see this, it will focus. Make sure that the dial reads down low enough. A lot of these thermometers will not read down below 100 degrees and uh, you're going to be incubating at 100 degrees, so you need to make sure that the dial reads low enough. Make sure it is a non-digital thermometer. Um, I just use a meat thermometer, and uh, the other thing you want to make sure you do is calibrate the thermometers before you use them. Make sure to calibrate them. I can't stress that enough, and it's pretty easy to do. You put it in some ice water, take a reading, put it in some uh, boiling water, take a reading, and then you adjust it. There's a little nut on the back. Hopefully you can see that. You just screw that to adjust the uh, the, therm the ther uh, thermometer itself. Now the reason I always say get two of them and make sure they're non-digital is that non-digital tends to be more accurate than digital. And I say get two of them so you can make sure that it's not, you know, if your incubator is reading a different temperature than your thermometer, if you have two extra thermometers, if any two of those three are reading the same, 
then you know that that's probably more than likely the temperature. Hopefully that kind of makes sense. If you just have one thermometer and it reads different than your incubator, you don't know which one is incorrect, the thermometer or the incubator. So I always say pick up two. These are cheap. These are like four or five dollars a piece, something like that. So no reason not to get a couple of these, but again, calibrate them before you use them. All right, so with all that being said, what is the best incubator? You know, honestly, they're all gonna be very, very similar. There's Farm Innovations and the Little Giants are pretty much the same uh, incubator. They're built the same way, not by the exact same company, but they work the same way. Their reviews are about the same. You'll read a lot of reviews that are really, really bad about any one of those incubators. Um, but you'll read a lot of reviews that are really good. I use a little giant incubator. I've used it for years and had very, very good luck with it. One thing I will say about little giant is, uh, again, the you know styrofoam uh, uh, incubators in general are notorious for the thermostat not reading correctly or going out on them. What I will say about little giant, Miller Manufacturing, the company that makes little giant, does stand behind their product. I did have a thermostat go out. It started, it started incubating way too high and cooked a batch of eggs. When I contacted the company, no questions asked, no proof of purchase required, nothing. They just sent me a brand new thermostat. It was like two, three days it was in the mail and it was in my house and uh, ready to install. Super easy to install. So I really highly respect that company because they do stand behind their product. They fixed any kind of issue. And I will say that I incubated for I think it was a good couple of years before the thermostat went out. So that is one good thing about Miller Manufacturing. I have not had experience, personal experience with Farm Innovations to know, you know how great their product is or not. I can tell you um, from experience from others I've talked to, they're, they're really similar results as to what you get with a little giant. So I'm kind of grouping those two together and calling them you know, about the same really honestly. If you can get one or the other in a local store, and uh, again, make sure it's got a forced air kit in it, and preferably an egg turner, um, it's gonna be just fine. Either one of those, they're gonna work just fine. It's nothing to stress about. Don't you know fret over it, just pick one up. It's gonna be just fine. Now, just slightly more. Both of those run usually with the forced air kit and the egg turner. You can usually buy them in a kit for about $115, somewhere right around in there, maybe a little bit more, maybe 120, 121, somewhere right around in there. I will leave links down below to all of these incubators. Those will be affiliate links. If you buy through there, you may uh, you know, throw a dollar my way. Not any extra on you, of course, but I may get a dollar off of that. Um, so if that bothers you, you know, go look it up on your own and buy it. Um, if it doesn't bother you, then I appreciate you supporting me that way. Thank you very much. Okay, so if you've got just a little bit more money to spend, and what I mean is $10, $15 more, maybe $20 more, uh, the Hovabater 15, I think it's 1588, I always get the number mixed up, but again, there'll be a link down below, is a great option. There's basically two options of Hovabaters. There's a 1602 and there's the 1588. And the difference between them is the way that they incubate. Uh, the 1602 has a wafer uh, style thermostat that has to be adjusted manually. So it's kind of one of those, you set it and then you hope that your environment doesn't change a whole lot because that's what it's set at. The 1588 has a digitally controlled thermostat so it will control the temperature even if you have fluctuations in the room that you're in or if you're incubating in maybe a room that's not that great um, you know insulated but Hovabater in general has fantastic reviews if I was gonna buy a new incubator in fact when this one goes out and I have to buy a new one I'm definitely gonna get a Hovabater 1588 with the forced air and the egg turner. I have heard some reviews that the egg turner with the Hovabater is not that great, that it doesn't work that well, but the little giant egg turner does fit in the Hovabater and it's a better option. I don't know if that's true or not, that's just the reviews that I've heard. So you can't always pick up uh, the little giant um, egg turner and it does work fantastic. You can pick that up separately from the incubator itself. So if you need to go that route, you can. All right, another thing I want to talk about is humidity in your incubators. Um, the, you know, all these incubators I talked about do have a humidity gauge, so they will read out humidity for you. Um, but don't trust that 100%. Humidity is not as big of a deal as many people make it anyway, so don't stress about it too much. But if you really, really want an accurate humidity reading, you're going to have to do relative to humidity. And that requires a little bit of extra work other than just the hydrometer that's in the incubator itself. You're going to have to add what they call a wet dry bulb. And that's a little bit out of the scope of this video. So you'll have to look that up and kind of read about that if you want. But again, 
I, I don't think that humid. I personally don't believe humidity is as big of a concern and you can just trust the readout on your incubator and not worry about it too much. Um, it's, it's not that big of a deal. Okay, some other things to consider is most of the incubators are going to have viewing windows here. Some of them have much bigger viewing windows than others. I will tell you that, um, you know, when you, when you think about it, it's nice to have a viewing window to be able to look through and see what's going on with the eggs. But once the hatch starts, the humidity jumps up so much, these windows fog over and you really can't see anything through them anyway. So don't make that a huge deciding factor. It really doesn't matter how big the window is you're going to have a hard time seeing anything through these windows once the egg hatches or start hatching anyway because they just fog up so bad that it's hard to see. So that, that's my opinion on the windows. Don't worry about them too much. One other thing I will tell you is that um, all your incubators are also going to have these vent holes here. Usually they come with plugs in them. Take them out, throw them away. You don't need those. You need to leave these vent holes open. Fresh air needs to be able to enter your incubator. Uh, the chicks can suffocate without it, um, so definitely always leave the plugs out. You don't need them. You never will. Take them out. Throw them away. All right, and finally, let's just kind of talk incubation in general. Um, again, these are home incubators. These are not commercial, high-scale, expensive incubators. You are going to have some problems with them from time to time. Um, usually those problems are pretty minimal and if you just follow instructions correctly, if you need instructions on how to incubate, by the way, I do have a great video series on how to improve your hatch rate. Uh, there will be a link right up here. I think it's on this side. Maybe it's on this side. I always get that mixed up. Uh, there'll be a link right up there either way for you to click on and you can go watch the entire series on how to incubate. You'll see how I do it in my little giant um, incubator and get a fantastic hatch out of it. Um, but again, don't blame it on the incubator automatically if you have problems with hatching. It could be something that you've done wrong if you're new to hatching. It's very easy to mess up. But incubation itself is not that hard. The less you fuss with it, the better it's going to go. Um, you know, you want to keep your humidity fairly low during the first, uh, well, excuse me, let me start over. Temperature, 99.5 degrees. If it gets to 100, that's fine. If it gets down to 99, that's fine. You just want to get an average of about 99.5 in a forced air um, incubator the entire time you're incubating. The first 14 days, well, until lockdown, for quail eggs, that's 14 days. The first 14 days, the humidity needs to be pretty low. In fact, I, I generally don't even add any water to my incubator. I just let it, what we call a dry hatch, let it dr run dry until the eggs go into lockdown. When they go into lockdown on day 15, I add water to the trays to get the, inc the, the uh, humidity up to about 65% close the incubator and I don't open it again until after all the eggs have hatched. Now sometimes the first egg will hatch, I leave it in there for 24, 48, sometimes even 72 hours until the rest of the eggs have had a chance to hatch. Don't go any further than 72 hours, it's really best to get your eggs or your uh, chicks that have hatched out once they've dried off, don't remove them whenever they're, they're, they're damp of course, but once they've dried off it's best to get them out within 24 to 48 hours. I usually go closer to 48 to give the rest of the eggs a chance to hatch. So anyway, again, that goes into way more detail in my hatching series. You can go watch that series if you need to, but don't just blame your incubator if you don't have a great hatch the first time, especially if you haven't calibrated thermometers, verified that it's reading the correct temperature. All right, so hopefully this clears a few things up for you if you're looking for an incubator. Again, I highly recommend the Hovabator series. If you can't afford that or if all you can find locally and you don't want to ship in is uh, Little Giants or Farm Innovations, either one of those is going to be fine. Uh, just remember, Little Giant does stand behind their uh, product pretty well, so I do recommend them from that standpoint. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you have another recommendation on a great um, incubator, leave it down in the comments below. I'd be happy to hear about that. And uh, as always... God bless.